welcome to Thursday's episode of The Literary Woodburn Reads a Book of Concord. As we did yesterday and every day this week, we're continuing to go through Article 2 on free will. In the explanation of the second petition of the Lord's Prayer, the following words occur. How is this done? When our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead a godly life here in time and there in eternity. These testimonies state that by our own powers we cannot come to Christ. God must give us His Holy Spirit by whom we are enlightened, sanctified, and thus brought to Christ through faith and kept with Him. No mention is made either of our will or cooperation. To this we will add a passage in which Dr. Luther later declared personally, with a solemn protest that he intended to persevere in this teaching unto the end. In his confession concerning Christ's Supper, he says, I herewith reject and condemn as sheer error all doctrines that glorify our free will as diametrically contrary to the help and grace of our Savior Jesus Christ. Outside of Christ's death and sin are our masters, and the devil is our God and Lord. And there is no power or ability, no cleverness or reason, with which we can prepare ourselves for righteousness in life or seek after it. On the contrary, we must remain the dupes and captives of sin and the property of the devil to do and to think what pleases them and what is contrary to God and his commandments. In these words, Dr. Luther, of blessed and holy memory, credits our free will with no power at all to qualify itself for righteousness or strive after it. But he says that a person is blinded and held captive to do only the devil's will, and to do what is contrary to God the Lord. Therefore, there is no cooperation of our will in a person's conversion. A person must be drawn and born anew by God. John chapter 6, verse 44. Otherwise, there is no thought in our hearts that of itself could turn to the Holy Gospel for the purpose of accepting it. Dr. Luther also wrote this way in his book, The Bondage of the Will, in 1525, in opposition to Erasmus. Luther clarified and supported this position well and thoroughly. Afterward, he repeated and explained it in his glorious commentary on the book of Genesis, especially on Genesis 26. Luther's meaning and understanding about some other peculiar disputed points introduced here and there by Erasmus, as of absolute necessity and such, have been firmly stated by him in the best and most careful way against all misunderstanding and perversion. We also appeal to this book and refer others to it. This teaching, incorrectly, to assert that an unregenerate person still has so much power that he can desire to, re to receive the gospel and to be comforted by it, and that the natural human will cooperate somehow in conversion. For such an erroneous opinion is contrary to the holy divine scripture, the Christian Augsburg Confession, its apology, the small cult articles, the large and the small catechisms of Luther, and other writings of this excellent, highly enlightened theologian. This doctrine about the inability and wickedness of our natural free will and about our conversion and regeneration, that it is God's work alone and not from our powers, is, un is impiously, shamefully, and maliciously abused in an unchristian way by both enthusiasts and the Epicureans. As a result of their speeches, many people have become disorderly and dissolute. They have grown idle and lazy in all Christian exercises of prayer, reading, and devout meditation. They say that, since they are unable by their own natural powers to convert themselves to God, they will always strive against God with all their might, or will wait until God converts them by force against their will. Or since they can do nothing in these spiritual things, and since everything is a work of God the Holy Spirit alone, they will regard, hear, or read neither the word nor the sacrament. But they will wait until God, without means, instills into them his gifts from heaven, so that they can truly feel and see in themselves that God has converted them. Other discouraged hearts might perhaps fall into difficult thoughts and doubts about whether God has chosen them and will work his gifts also in them through the Holy Spirit. They do this especially when they are aware of no strong, intense faith and sincere obedience in themselves, but only of weakness, fear, and misery. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads the Book of Concord, and I wish you a blessed day.